In this series of videos, we've been tackling a problem on CVP analysis, which is also called break-even analysis. In the first part, we worked through parts A through E, uh, just some basic calculations, some break-even point and target profit computations. In the second part of the video, we did some what-if analysis in parts F and G. And I gotta tell you, there's about a million different ways people can ask you what if questions. And the only way to get there is to practice. I've shown you just two types, but you gotta practice this stuff to get good at it. The final question we're gonna take on is one on operating leverage, a tricky concept to grasp. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about operating leverage, then we're gonna tackle it in terms of this question. So uh, before I even start to tackle part H, I just wanna discuss operating leverage as a concept. So let's say we've got two companies, all right? So we've got company uh, variable, that's the name of the company, and company fixed. And they're very similar companies. They're competing in the same industry. Their company variable has a lot of employees, a very labor intensive company fixed, a lot of machinery, very capital intensive. So, but it's amazing they had an exact tie last year. They had the exact same amount of sales and the exact same amount of net income. Uh, so let's try to figure out what these companies will look like. Their sales were both, uh, um, making this up as I go, $100,000. Sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin minus fixed expenses equals net income. And they both made, uh, let's say, $20,000 in profit. So very similar companies. They're in the same industry, doing the same stuff, and they had the same sales and the same net income. What an amazing coincidence. But they are very different in terms of their capital structure. Company variable is, as you might suspect, as the name suggests, has a lot of variable costs. 100 grand minus 60 grand is 40. They have 20,000 in fixed expenses to give them net income of $20,000. Company fixed has much fewer variable expenses and more fixed expenses. They only have 10,000 in variable expenses, giving them 90,000 in contribution. Their fixed expenses are 70, giving them net income of 20. So again, similar companies, very different income statements. And what we're looking at on these income statements is called the capital structure of the company. Company fixed, obviously, is a focus on machinery and more fixed assets. Company variable, uh, more variable expenses. Now, the degree of operating leverage is the ratio we're going to focus on in this video. And the degree of operating leverage is computed, as you can see in our little formula sheet, as contribution margin divided by net income. Not CM per unit divided by net income per unit, just CM divided by net income. Total numbers. So our contribution margin divided by our net income. So for company variable, their contribution margin is 40 divided by 20. Again, we're calculating the DOL, the degree of operating leverage. Their operating leverage factor is two. That's a two. Uh, for company fixed, it's CM divided by net income. It's 90,000 divided by 20,000 their operating leverage factor is 4.5. Now, don't try to put a dollar sign on this. Don't try to put a percent sign on this. This is just a number. That's all it is. If you look back to your like intro to financial accounting, the current ratio is like, like this. It's just a number. So what does it mean? It means this is the relative variability of the company. Uh, and, and there's actually a sentence I'm going to write on the board, or on the board, on the screen here and it's for company variable if sales go up by one percent profit goes up by two times one percent the degree of operating leverage times one percent they go up by two percent so if sales go up I shouldn't use the word go up. I'm going to say increase. Make me sound more professional. By 20%, profits increase by, again, the degree of operating leverage, two times 
20%, profits will increase by 40%. Uh, same thing for this fixed company. If sales increase by 1%, profits go up 4.5 times 1% is 4.5%. If sales go up by 20%, profits increase by 90%. Now, this company has more operating leverage than the other. The true, can, the opposite can be true. If sales go down by 1%, this company hurts more because they have more fixed costs that they're not covering, right? Sales go up, well, they have more fixed costs. That means they're not paying people out more in variable costs. So if sales go up, the more highly operating leverage company profits more. If sales go down, the more highly operating leverage company hurts more. Um, but that's the operating leverage. It sort of speaks to the amount of fixed costs compared to the variable costs. It speaks to the capital structure of the company, and it speaks to how they're going to do with variations in, in revenues. So um, I think that's it. Let's go back to the problem and solve it. So the problem says, what's this company's degree of operating leverage? So let's see, it's contribution margin divided by sales, 1.8 million divided by 500,000. So let's do the math, squeeze it in somewhere. I'll squeeze it in right here. 1.8 million divided by 500,000. It's three point, oh, I can't do it in my head. I should be able to do it, 3.6. I'm going to double check. Feeling insecure. Three point six. Okay, good. So it's three point six. Again, that is a number. It's not a percent. It's just our operating leverage factor. So we've answered that part of the question. If sales go up by five percent, how much will net income increase? Well, if sales go up, sales up five percent. Net income is going up by 3.6 times 5%. Net income is going up by 18%. Now, how, might ask by how much? Like in dollars, what does that mean? Well, net income was 500,000. If it's going up by 18%, we multiply that by 1.18. It's increasing by 18%. 500,000 times 1.18. Times 1.18 is 590,000. So again, if our sales go up by 5%, uh, our net income is going to go up to 590,000. It's going to go up, I should say. It's going to go up by 90,000. So it increases by 90 to, a, to an ending total of 590. All right, we've completed the problem. Again, I didn't really do a theory side of CVP. I think you're best served by practicing CVP problems. Some teachers will say, oh, do this one the equation method or do this one the formula method. I say get the answer and feel good about it when you do. So practice, practice, practice. This is just one small type of problem and there's, there's countless others. So get to work. Enjoy yourself. Accounting's the best. All right, talk to you guys next time.